cool you, will change your story, will elevate your brand, will pop for your beans up. Welcome to Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance. Join us as we build saints to become voices, visionaries, and vessels of God's kingdom. God bless you. Glory to Jesus Christ. I'm really excited to be here. It's a moment of destiny. Hallelujah. How many of you can feel that way in the spirit? It's a moment of destiny. Pastor Bimbo didn't uh, tell you something that I found very intriguing. I packed up my bags and I was, I already had a, a sense of what I wanted to wear, <laughs> you know. And as I was going, uh, you know, to do my final goodbyes before the trip, I stood on the stairs and I said, oh, I haven't made that prayer. So I said, Lord, what did I wear to the meeting? You know, and he said, white on Friday. Um, so I'm like, no, nobody's doing white. Ah. Oh, I want to sit on the floor. That kind of, the sense I get is going to be a prophetic meeting. And he said, that's what everybody's going to be wearing. <laughs> and then, so Pastor Bimbo had said to me, uh, had sent me a message that I didn't see saying, oh, let's just uh, align, you know, a few details. But we didn't have that conversation. And she said, I didn't want to send a text saying that. So I thought if we got on a call, I would just mention it. You know, but we didn't get on that call, but the Lord got on the call. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I feel very strongly in my spirit that 100% we're dressed representing something in the spirit. Yes, we are. What, what a time to be alive. What a time to, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. Thank you, God. I'm going to count on the minstrels as we do the, uh, the hymn, I am pressing on the upward way. I'm pressing on the upward way. Zote kura di sevreshte lo kura biza melahasi. Feze do ko janis. Lo pero ko vize lo cruz tivashte. There will be encounters upon encounters. Encounters upon encounters. Uh, there will be mighty dimensions of healing. Mighty dimensions of grace. There will be moves of the spirit. There will be baptisms in the spirit. There will be new dimensions of clarity. There will be healing streams and breaking forth. There will be breakthroughs and mercies. There will be great deliverance and great restoration. The word of God will billow from the realms of the spirit. There will be master plans and masterpieces. There will be road maps and counsel. There will be answers in the name of Jesus. Awakened answers in the name of Jesus. Oiled opportunities in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies in the name of Jesus. Visionary valiance in the name of Jesus. Bold beginnings in the name of Jesus. Bounce backs in the name of Jesus. Divine direction in the name of Jesus. Authoritative anointings in the name of Jesus. New realms of abundance in the name of Jesus. Miraculous manifestations in the name of Jesus. A move of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Great help and great assistance in the name of Jesus. Anakove la kosite leveros. Amikovisa. Our people will arise out of this conference. We are at a very significant, strategic, and supernatural hour. Listen to me, women of God, men of God. We are at the beginning of the last seven months of this year, which is at the beginning of the last seven years of this decade. You're standing at the threshold of perfection. You're standing at the threshold of possibilities. You didn't hear me. You're standing at the threshold of power. You're standing at the threshold of the prophetic. Whatsoever things have been ordained, prepared, and declared over your life that have not found manifestation. We are now in the hour that is the hour of the womb opener. The womb opener in the spirit. 
in the name of Jesus Christ we don't even really understand what the Lord wants to do and that is fine we're here to align ourselves it's a journey of attunement so that you can hear alignment so that you can be placed where you ought to be and then assignment so that you can take on what is your portion in this end time mandate are you declaring that with me attunement alignment and assignment it's my hour for attunement alignment and assignment woman of God it's not business as usual I know you already know that we got into this meeting and God didn't even wait for us to get on into the conference before he started to pour out you're at the beginning of something truly radical it's true you are the dividing line you are right at the dividing line after this conference it will become clear because there will be a manner of woman you used to be and a manner of woman you will now become in the name of the Lord Jesus it's a divine it's a dividing line in the spirit it's a dividing line in the spirit where you will start to remember that women of purpose 2024 was the womb opener into the woman I now became a woman of great strength a woman of great substance a woman of great stature a woman of great stamina in the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we're ready for what God is ready for
We're crying out for higher ground, higher ground, you're calling us higher, we say yes to you God, higher in worship, higher in the word, higher in warfare, higher in wonders, higher in wisdom, higher in fortitude to pray, higher in fortitude to fast. Higher in fortitude to follow. Higher ground, Eborade Shabab. Higher ground, Elegade Bero Kame Sata. We're following you higher. Yahweh, be the pilot. Yahweh, you're the pilot. Yahweh, Yahweh. Higher ground, Imasuko Televero Kabeya. Take us to higher ground. We are eyes on higher ground. Ah, Selodo, Erabebe Koto Saba. We are eyes on higher ground. We are eyes on higher ground. In the distance, you're calling us to higher ground. We hear you calling us. Orebuto kopoliata, emama meleberege velo kaya taba, iroveveki aso telemaya. We hear you calling us beyond the size of comfort. 
We hear you calling us beyond the source of limitations. Higher ground, deliver the days of higher, higher, higher ground. On higher ground, never go sabaya. Let desire rise for higher grounds. Woman of God, let desire rise for higher grounds. Yahweh, your ways. Yahweh, we want your ways. Yeah. Yahweh, we want your ways. Higher ground. Yahweh, I want your way. Cry out for higher ground. Yahweh, I want your way. Amekora Develasa. Renounce everything that stands in the way of higher ground. Samelebere Yahweh, we want your way. You're calling us beyond the shore. Era koto lo bere be kamasa, ale ba be kavi rokozo chele be aya ground. Ara le koto zope, ara be koto levere, ame me sata la baria kose ya. Ara be be koto sava, plant our feet on higher ground, establish us in your purpose, empower us for destiny. Holy Ghost, you're the midwife. You're the midwife. You're the midwife. You're the midwife of what the Lord is doing. Aleborogodos, higher grounds, higher grounds. Arabo koto loyosa, mmmme kolo vebe. Arabo koto soto sabaya. Holy Ghost, you're the midwife. Emma Kosia Telele Adeborobe Kasaba. There are contractions in the heavenlies, contractions in the womb of the spirit, and you are being born in time by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ele Masu Televeaya Arobe Kotolo Sofe Higher Ground. Pray for two more minutes, woman of God. Take me deeper, God. Call me higher, God. Uncle life is no longer. Okay, for the hunger and thirst in my spirit. Father, Uncle life is no longer. Okay, for the hunger and the thirst in my spirit. Yahweh. Deeper than the kneelings, oh God. Until we are immersed. Don't stop. Until we are immersed. Don't stop. Higher ground. Until we are immersed. Please don't stop. Higher ground. Until we are ignited, don't stop. Higher grounds. Until we are transformed, don't stop. We're crying out for higher grounds. Hey, yale belo sabe, rakoto le badiasa. Higher ground. Until we are immersed, don't stop. Higher ground. Eleborodo kavesata. Araba bakore de de. Ina mesu televesata. Until we are immersed, don't stop. We're crying out for higher grounds. Ele masiko shaba. Arabe le bere ge via tuna, erakate zige devero kabaya, 
E mama shade leve ruko de Ulana kia si mande ata Ala beroko via sabate la vekasha Loke la se leve roka base ma Melo sina na koreke via tovaya Erebe de bedo shaba Erebe de belia shana Ekoso kofe tele masiba Erebe be koriande leve roka sisha Ale mama kore de de Erakoto soto lo kofe da baya Adela mama soko shabaya Anana kia zove leberi ya koto lelele shatayasa Thank you Lord Hallelujah Whatever posture you take is fine but we really just are here for big business with the king. Our hearts are burning. He's making us ready for what he has made ready for us. I don't know if you heard me, but I just said to you that your heavenly father is making you ready for what he has made ready for you. He's preparing you for what he has prepared you for. Hallelujah. The word arise is a dangerous word in the spirit. Just like my sisters have said, it's a word that invites you to take a posture that is uncomfortable, but it's the requirement and the prerequisite for anything of destiny significance. There are many ways to live, but the moment you determine that your life will have kingdom relevance and eternal consequence. The moment you make that consecrated desire known to God, that you don't just want to be a meaningless statistic, that your desire on the earth realm is to partner with Yahweh to birth his agenda so that you will reach your generation as though Jesus were living in it. The moment you start to say, I'm fighting for legacy, when you start to say, even if I didn't come from a spiritual family, a spiritual family must come from me. Even if I didn't come from a wealthy lineage, a wealthy lineage must come from me. When you start to say that I want to be a forerunner of a legacy and I don't want to die as an individual, but an institution that I want to play my part the conversation changes. The moment you begin to say, Lord, if there's something you're doing in my generation, don't do it without me. When you start to say, others may, but I cannot, there's a calling on my life. The conversation changes. And this is the conversation. Look at this. A time comes in the life of a believer where you have to make a definitive response to the invitations of God. God's invitation and his vacancies are enormous but not everyone responds where the game changes is not the point where we get called where the game changes is the point when we say yes arise is a dangerous word to arise is to ascend to mount up or move to a higher place to emerge from below the horizon to get out of bed to leave the place or the state of rest to leave a sitting or a lying posture to arise is to begin to be sprung up to originate 
to originate to originate in the realm of the spirit there are destiny responses that make your life actually begin amen and amen there are responses that open up your life to possibilities it said to arise is to spring up to originate like the coordinates of destiny ultimately begin to find you on the horizon to revive from death to leave the grave figuratively in the scripture to wake up from a state of sin and stupidity to break out of normalized nonsense to say no more to patterns of carnality that give you temporary pleasure but leave a poisonous mark on the journey to denounce and to renounce the things that slow you down on the path to destiny a time comes in a woman's life where she says my biology is my prophecy if I have the capacity to partner with God and produce new life and push out new life it means in the realm of the spirit I can partner with God to see him incubate a miracle in within the context of my submission incubate a miracle within the context of my intercession incubate a miracle within the context of my sacrifice that is a manner of woman I can become that heaven begins to say there is nothing we want to do in this family that we will do without partnership with this one he said just as we see in Ephesians 5 to wake up from a state of sin and stupidity to repent arise from the dead and Christ will give you new life to appear to become known to become visible sensible operative you know that powerful story that powerful operation that angelic move that came to Peter when he was in prison and told him to arise you remember that he thought he was dreaming and the angel led him through the first and the second gate and the scripture says that the angel ultimately led him to the gate that oversaw the city some of you have assignments in the city you have mandates in healthcare, education, technology, energy, and environment. You have a mandate that God has put in your spirit for governance and policy or sustainable fashion. You have a calling to the beauty industry. There's something God has shown you that can overturn the economic repression of the continent of Africa. But you've been busy taking the certifications running your ads and setting up your sales funnels attending the conferences and meeting up with the industry leaders so good but it's how foolish and how wise except you have been energized with the supplies in the realm where your assignment came from they play to arise is to take position in the spirit by agreeing with God that you are who he said you are this for women I find is one of the most radical and prophetic steps that unlock you into the gates that oversee the city this dimension of preferring who God says you are in the presence of conflicting evidence this is a deeply spiritual posture to look at all around you and to see nothing that bears semblance to the word you received but to continue to insist like a crazy person because if you don't submit to a superior reality alternative nonsense in the environment 
will encroach your arena but say not me not today not anymore the angel said arise and got him out to the other side it's a dangerous conversation it's a posture of I'm not giving up anymore until my eyes see my hands handle and my life manifest the fulfillment of every divine promise which I continue to labor upon in the spirit the gates that oversaw the city so cities are manned by gates industries are manned by gates regions are manned by gates one of the things the Lord said to me about this conference he said this conference is a womb breaker conference and he said it's not merely about the women of this great house but it's about the women of this region he said he is giving agape house of worship a new level of authority and dominion over territories and God is raising and elevating your voice your influence and your positioning as critical decision makers spiritual legislators and solution bearers for the region and in the course of the conference by God's grace we're gonna get a chance to just put the map of New Jersey up and we start to pray for boroughs and pray for townships and we start to declare the will of God over this territory and the women who are going to break out of the conference this year and they will become impregnated with answers for the space answers for the region in the name of Jesus Christ and I don't even care what your journey is been like I'm saying that arise is a dangerous context because primarily to arise is to reckon your future as more potent than your past and that is the life of faith to believe bigger something concerning what God has said that no eyes have seen yet making you dance to a distant chill like a crazy woman all around you it doesn't look like anything has shifted but you know your conviction has shifted you know your language has shifted you know your relationships have shifted you know your authority has shifted I, I, I don't know if you can hear me and you know that your anointing has shifted so to arise means on Monday morning I go on the offensive I'm not merely trying to protect myself from assault I'm going to the enemy territory I'm making it my business for the absolute recovery of everything the enemy stole not just from me but anyone I care about I will chase you down the hills and I will harass all the things that have harassed God's people. Arise. The beautiful thing about arising is that you are not going on your own, you know, your own adventure. You are going in response. Arise and shine. Your light is come. The glory of our King is risen upon you. In scripture some of the most remarkable arenas where we're invited to arise at the spaces where we'll enter quickly and begin to pray number one we are invited to arise and shine and that speaks about aligning your life to the brand you have received in the spirit this is both a spiritual and a strategic posture. It will even show in the way you rework your website, in the way you rewrite your bio, in the way you present yourself on LinkedIn, in the manner of opportunities you start to seek, in how you reorder your entire life 
a reflection of who you are in the spirit. Arise and shine is an invitation to authenticity. It is to live your life on the weight of God's radiance, on the weight of God's colorfulness. Do you understand this? It is to place yourself where God places you. It is to position yourself on the account of a name you have received. It takes time some time to catch up with faith. But you already have to be sounding like who you are. After a while the environment begins to say, okay that's who you are. If you wait for man to honor, ordain, recognize, promote, appreciate you, or bring you to the table, you're too late to the party. We're not waiting for tables. We are creating the tables. I'm not telling you what, I, what sounds good. I'm saying this is how I have lived my life. I am an establisher of generational infrastructures that announce women to the front lines. We're legacy leaders. Every single one of us has a space where you can invite others to the table. Arise and shine. It is to reorder your brand to reorganize your life in alignment and authentically true to what God is saying to you about yourself. And you've got to believe it before other people believe it. In fact, sometimes what is stressing you is you're telling too many people what God told you that you were meant to simply walk on. You were meant to simply go ahead and look like what God told you. Sound like what God told you. Build like what God told you. Be married like God told you. Regardless of the generational divorce that you know lies in the wake of your husband's lineage or yours. Are you not taking this thing too far? Let me take it too far. Anyway, I'm already seated far above principalities and powers. Let it be far like that. I'm creating a gradient in the spirit. We have grounds to cover. He said, arise and shine. He said, arise and build. Nehemiah invited the brothers. He said, can you not see the ruins? Arise and build. I find this as an arena where women don't go too quickly. Yet it is a space of extraordinary reserve of supplies. Stop running from the ruins. Stop running from the wreckage. Stop being disappointed about the decisions you made wrong. And look, I know that there's a way a woman's life could be radically impacted by the unkind and unwise decisions of someone else. Whether you as a daughter or you as a wife or you as a victim of a stereotype in society. But I'm saying when it comes to building, a day comes, comes in your life when you say, I don't like what the journey has been, but I'm certain that this is not the legacy I want to leave for those coming. I will arise and I will build. I will arise and I will build. And there was one who's gone ahead of us, an apostle of this same heritage, who said I'm a master builder. There's such a thing as mastery in building. Where you enter the wreckage and the ruins. You, you enter into the arena where things are falling apart. And you and God begin to infrastructure and architecture a brand new beginning. Do you believe for that? Do you remember the woman who said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. The journey's been tough. But to arise and build meant for her to return 
to the place where she missed it. In my estimation of her family dynamics, they stepped out of Judah in a time of famine. So her husband made an economic decision, looked on the horizon and saw an economy, a system that was wealth generating. He was trying his best to do good for his family, but he stepped out of purpose because five of the most radical destiny decisions that we must make and make carefully is one, the decision to follow Jesus Christ, the choice of salvation, and then the decision of who to marry, the decision of where to live, the decision of where to worship, and the decision of how to express your purpose through work or a visionary assignment. So they stepped out of a critical arena of the blessing. The blessing is actually geographic in nature. Believe me. And what that means is not that God is in one city and is not in another. But the blessing goes with you where God asked you to go. Amen. So it's not a change of location that changes anything. A lizard in Nigeria doesn't become an alligator in the U.S. Amen and amen. amen. And no matter the dexterity of the fish, put it on sand. You see? So arise and build. Arise and build is a conversation of the willingness to return to where the deviation began and led to the wreckage. Arise and build. Arise and build. And it's an assurance of new beginnings. An assurance of new beginnings. Arise and thresh. My God. Arise and thresh. Scripture showed us in Isaiah, showed us in uh, Mika about a painful phenomenon where the, the, um, the pomegranates and the grapes were ripe until they began to waste because the people were complacent. And scripture started to declare to the women who were in Israel saying that woe unto him who is at ease in Zion that you're crossing your leg and you're complacent you're feeling like you're enjoying the comfort but disaster is coming if you don't change your posture arise and thresh there is a way that comfort can gatekeep one's calling there's a way that comfort and a similar appearance of success and that is my own concern about systems that work. The very thing about systems that work is also the very thing that take out the posture of aspiration and vision and breakthroughs from those who were giving an assignment for their generation. A system that works. Why well, you're okay. Why are you not meant to be okay? Because you're not meant to be okay until at least five things have happened. You are not meant to be okay until your soul is healed. You are not meant to be at ease until your soul is healed and healthy and prosperous. The enemy understands this. And one of the sources of derailment and ensnarement for the souls of women is often comfort. And that's why that question, that profound question of scripture, when he said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? He wasn't merely speaking about inheriting the earth succeeding on the earth and missing heaven it's talking about missing heaven twice 
missing God on earth and missing God in eternity. Because eternal life is not merely about life that never ends after we die. It's about life as God has it here on earth. I wish above all things, above all things, that you prosper. And even as your soul prospers. So, if you are not paying a lot of attention, you would have a sense of pseudo satisfaction. But there will be something aching. The problem with when things are aching is that number one, pain reconstructs the personality of a person. Yeah. You keep changing. You think it's adulting. You, you lose your childlike wonder. You lose your playfulness. You lose your tenderness. You lose bowels of compassion. And many years down the line, bigger bank account, but a deeply troubled and very lean soul. Say not me. Not here. Not, here. Not, anymore. Not anymore. So he said, woe unto him. Who is it? He is in Zion. He said, these women are complacent in Zion. You can't be okay if your soul is not okay. And no matter how you learn to catwalk with a limp, it's still painful. We were designed for Eden. We were designed for peace. You see, we were designed for love. We were designed for purity. You know, we were designed for God-great lives. Living from the presence. You know, not overtaking by carnality and resentment. And healing streams are flowing right now. Healing streams are flowing right now. I said healing streams are flowing right now. And I'm going to bring it together for you and we pray. You cannot be okay if your family is not saved. <laughs> you ought not to be at ease if your family is not saved when your family is not saved when your family is saved you ought not to be at ease until your family is burning burning on holy ghost fire our children must preach the gospel our teenagers must represent the agenda of the kingdom our young ones must carry the spirit of christ to both public and primary school and, and private schools. Do you understand the manner of seduction that is in this age? Do you, do you reckon the manner of fire that is required to see nakedness consistently and still have your eyes on Jesus? I hope you are not underestimating the requirement of intercession for all the men in your life. I hope you reckon that it is worldly wisdom which is equivalent to spiritual foolishness to think the response to the nakedness in the world is to be more flirtatious at home. Selah. And if you think that I'm just being old school, I actually teach uh, sex as an infrastructure for, for, for my people. I, I unpack the dexterity that exists within intimacy. I believe in it. It's a blessing from the Lord. But it's foolishness for a wife to think that the response to the spirit of seduction in the world and the way to douse the pressure that exists in the world is the sophistication of a lingerie. 
Oroboto kopeli muhandi lebe ayosa. Ambreki avre kusula u ayela beha. Ah! Find a sister and say ah! We cannot end in the flesh. What we started in the spirit. Emo koroso belihande. Efrosh te kuria sevlis. Spirit responds to spirit. By the way, it's not, it's not a conversation for women alone. Men must pray for their wives. You've been in a boardroom before. You're listening to a presentation. You are inspired by the intellectual weight and the, the refined substance of thought. Next thing you are noticing broad chest, before, you, before they say Jack Robinson, you are observing beards. Ten minutes into the conversation, you are asking why you didn't meet him before. And this is your woman of God, heavily anointed. It's a spirit of seduction. Because Satan now drives Prado and he carries Prada. He looks like us, sounds like us, but he's not one of us. So you see, there are things you will just, you enter a room, you perceive a, a foul spirit and you prosecute it spiritually. This is what it means to be a woman of God. Yeah. Handshake. Lokura divorus and de la boros. Ashotele kabaha. Mevozo. Elebera gaviste. Are you talking to me? No, no, no. Le boroko biza bela hasta. It's like a borobino ku veveliaste. Meso telekosa. Sometimes you just enter the bathroom in the office. You can see demonic activity. You're being picked on. There's a critical spirit. There's a lying spirit. There's a seductive spirit. There's an antagonistic spirit. You get into the space, your energy is low. Your productivity is low. You're questioning your excellence. This is you, heavily anointed. Don't prosecute it in the flesh. Don't think about the next certification first. Enter the bathroom. If they will hear you, Ila, you call names. You, you invite lungs, livers, or sofa gods into a boardroom. Kelly, Nikki, Boboyi, Elema Kol Sibaha, Ross Ojalakusia. You just settle it, you settle it. Because you know that when it comes to excellence, you have that covered. You are not a mediocre. But you get into project meeting, your tongue is tied. Ah, Alemo Kobeleveha. So untied. Lose her and let her go. Mako Televeha. Excellence of speech in the name of Jesus. Excellence of knowledge in the name of Jesus. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. He directs it wherever he wishes. Like the river of water. You will even be doing your like, eh, Mako Rosivaha. Straightening up. Arrest the madness in the name of Jesus. That's what it means to arise. They are giving feedback. You're keeping a steadfast gaze. So Excellent. Thank you. Great thoughts. You know that my daytime job is advising government. So that's my, that's my daytime job. And when you get into policy advisory, you now reckon that what you're dealing with is actually sabotage. Yeah. So before you make presentation, I have the language of the Chaldeans. Yes. I can, I can say it in a language they understand, but I reckon that's not what I'm dealing with. 
what I'm dealing with is under the presentation. It's, it's, it's down there. Uh, ah, you never eat. I've never seen you eat. I can't eat. I'm a Kobeni Viasa. Or I'm in warfare. You, I know you in the spirit. Shabi, you know me too. Ele Berevoha. You don't talk much, you don't eat. I bear a book of PRV. Also, Tuja. No, don't be deceived by my makeup. Head in between ties. I love also coffee. Arise and build. Arise and shine. Arise and thresh. Would you rise up this evening and declare in the name of Jesus a new arena of strength? I receive a new supply of strength. To arise is to take action. Cry out to the Lord, show me what I must do. The next most significant dimensions of obedience. Show me where I must go. Show me who I must speak to. Show me how to reorganize my schedule. Show me how I must present my thoughts. Show me where I must go. Are you praying? I'm a nail of this or toss of record hope. Cry out. I just heard the Lord say, pray about the atmosphere in your homes. Now go up to the Lord and do that. Take charge of the atmosphere in your home. In the name of Jesus Christ. Cast out the spirit of lethargy. The spirit of laziness. The spirit of prayerlessness. The spirit of offense. The spirit of bitterness. Cast it out. The spirit of confusion. Pray about the atmosphere in your home. In the name of Jesus. Now pray for your heart. A new fire on my altar. Receive the spirit of boldness. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of boldness. The Lord promised that in this Friday's now a meeting. He will tell you your name in the spirit. I want you to receive that. Show me who I am in the spirit. Show me who I am in the spirit. Show me who I am in the spirit. Elevate my revelation of who you call me. Where is my office? What is the manner of my mantle? What is my mandate? What have you given to me? Show me who I am in the spirit. We have three more prayers very quickly. Now I want you to submit your personality to the Lord. Present your personality to the Lord. Father, refine my character, my personality, refine my appetite, refine my desires, refine my speech and my language, refine my emotions. I will no longer respond in the flesh. My personality will not stand in the way of arising as a vessel for you. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this one very quickly. Lord, block the sources of wastage and leakage in my life. Show me what is foiling any form of leakage, of grace, wastage, of resources. In the name of Jesus, I'm a just steward of the resources of heaven. I heard the Lord ask me to lead you to pray that one. Pray it with all your heart. Show me the sources of leakage and wastage. Make me a just steward of your resources. In the name of Jesus. Now receive a new anointing. 
a fresh anointing what God has reserved for this conference that will urge you forward in the coming days pray that one with all your heart a new anointing in the name of Jesus a new anointing a fresh grace in the name of Jesus thank you for listening we are sure you have been tremendously blessed to connect with Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance please visit our website www.kingdomleadersglobal.org Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance, for our video resources. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Kingdom Leaders Global. God bless you.